Hi everybody, um, I'm gonna wait a few minutes for some of you to come live with me. Um, I know you're being notified, so for those of you who are new, just joining, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN, welcome. I'm also the creator and founder of The Galveston Diet, and I am here today to talk to you guys about perimenopause and how to self-diagnose perimenopause, what some of the signs and symptoms might be, and to see if you actually may be in perimenopause. So 92.8% of my followers are women. So if you're being shown this video live, double tap the screen to like the video. It increases TikTok showing this video to other people. Um, so so just to double tap the screen and then we'll like the video. Thank you so much for the likes. And then of course you can always share this video by tapping on my phone, it's right here, um, this dot 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 button to share the video. Also if you're new and you'd like to follow me to learn more about perimenopause, menopause, nutrition, um, more than welcome to, please follow the video. So um, for those of you just joining, my name is Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN physician. Um, I'm in my clinic right now between patients, so I decided to take a few minutes to come live to answer any questions that you might have and just spread some more general knowledge and information about perimenopause and give you some tips to help you decide if you are yourself in perimenopause and if some of the symptoms that you're having may be related to your decreasing estrogen levels over time. So, um, the average age of menopause. So menopause by definition is one year after your last menstrual cycle. It's one day in your life, okay? Now you have pre-menopause or perimenopause, menopause, and then post-menopause. So um, as OBGYNs, when you go to the doctor and you have a blood test done, we are excellent at diagnosing post-menopause. Okay, it's a simple blood test. It's very, very diagnostic. It is like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, done, yes, you're in menopause. Okay, now let's talk about treatment options and your symptoms and what we can do. The problem is perimenopause is very difficult to diagnose because we don't have a good blood test to tell you if you're in perimenopause, especially in the earlier stages, your blood levels will look normal. Why is that? Why is that? The estrogen levels begin to decrease over time, but it is, it is over time, it is a, a decrease like this, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it wildly fluctuates, okay? It's a very complicated endocrinological dance where you may feel completely normal for two or three months and have two or three horrible months and then have a normal month and then a not normal month and every single woman's menopause is different. You have different symptomatology, even though you and I may have the exact same estrogen level you know, in perimenopause, on day five or whatever, our symptoms can be completely, completely different. So as physicians, we love to blood test. We love to have a blood test and be able to tell people the answer, but guess what? We don't have a good blood test to diagnose perimenopause because of the intense fluctuations and the different symptomatology um, in women. So, so how do you diagnose it? Well, the average age of menopause is 51. Okay, but normal menopause, meaning your cycles have stopped, your estrogen is low, you're done, okay? Normal is 45 to 55. The decreasing estrogen levels for women start seven to 10 years before your period stops completely. So that is going to put you somewhere in your mid-30s to mid-40s when you start feeling the symptoms related to perimenopause, okay? And a blood test is not helpful. It is not helpful. Matter of fact, a blood test may just make you feel like you're crazy. So how do you know? It takes an astute clinician to listen to you, get all of the symptoms down, and start making the connection in their brain that this constellation of symptoms may be perimenopausal. Well, there is actually a validated scoring system that most doctors don't know about or are too lazy to actually use, and it's called the Australasian Menopause Scoring System. It has been, so So the New Zealand, Australia, you know, Australasian Menopause Society put together a scoring system and then validated it, meaning they tested it on thousands of people and it is very, very accurate to tell you it's unlikely your symptoms are related to perimenopause, it's possible your symptoms are related to perimenopause, or it's very likely your symptoms are related to perimenopause. And so I didn't even know about it till three or four years ago. I had put the quiz on our website. I've only done it. I make no money off the quiz. It's absolutely free. You can Google it and go find it yourself, but it will give you your score 
tell you where you fall in the range and then give you a ton of the one on my website will give you a bunch of information about perimenopause treatment options through email so you sign up for the email it'll send you your score and all the information that you can then take to your doctor it's a way to educate you as to you know being a better advocate for yourself because i can't go with you to all your appointments okay so if you go to, um, oh, so hi, if you're new, we, we're now up to 260 people. Double tap the screen to like the video. Just tap, 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 tap like that on the screen to like the video. Um, and the um, if you're new also, please, you can share this video by clicking the arrow button here to share the video. And if you have any questions, I will get to them at the end of the talk. Click this little other button here with the question mark in the square. Um, ha, why can't you go with me to my appointment? That's awesome. Hi, Blake. How are you? Um, and so double tap the screen, like the video. It really helps TikTok show more people. Now we're over 300. Um, and so y'all want to know, how do you take the perimenopause quiz? Okay. If you go to my link up here, so it'll take you off the video, or you can just go to galvisondiet.com. If you click on blog, and then you scroll down a bit, you will see a blog post that says, what is perimenopause? There's tons of information there. And if you get to the bottom, there is a link to our quiz, okay? Now it's also in the link in bio at the top of the TikTok page. But if you don't want to leave the video, cause I'm gonna talk about a lot more perimenopause information, um, then you, Oh, great question. What is perimenopause? Excellent question. So, so for those of you who don't know, perimenopause is the beginning um, to, so it's the time period where between absolutely normal hormonal function to full on menopause. And that is a seven to 10 year transition that women go through somewhere in their mid thirties, mid forties until their period stops somewhere average age 51, but could be as early as 45 and still be considered normal. And so the list of symptoms associated with decreasing estrogen levels is mind blowing. Okay. So I'm going to go through the usual symptoms are easy. Hor you'll start seeing period fluctuations more than you're used to, less than you're used to, skipping, having too many. All of that can be associated with perimenopause. However, if you're having more periods than you're used to or they're getting heavier, it could also be a symptom of something else like a polyp or a growth or a fibroid. So again, takes a trip to the doctor, ruling out the other causes to make sure that we're not missing something else pathologic, okay? And a lot of perimenopausal symptoms can also be seen in other conditions. Um, of course, hot flashes, that 85% of us will have hot flashes, almost 100% of us will have uh, changes in our periods. Um, and then, um, but there is a lot of symptoms that are harder to kind of pinpoint. So body odor changes, a lot of my patients have come to me and said they are having massive body odor changes. This probably has more to do with increasing activity of our androgen levels. So what happens is as our estrogen levels over time decrease, your liver stops producing as much steroid, steroid hormone binding globulin, or in medicine we say SHBG. SHBG is a protein that binds our sex hormones. So all of us, men and female, male and female, have sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. And then there are variations, estradiol, estrone, estrace. We have um, androstene, you know, there's a lot of or sex hormones out there, but the three main categories, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, okay? In a woman in perimenopause, her overall estrogen and progesterone levels are decreasing over time. Um, leading to decrease. So when the protein that our liver creates to bind and hold um, the sex hormones in our body, okay, decreases, then there's nothing holding their activity back. So they become more active, okay? So that is why even though your estrogen levels are low, you still can feel kind of normal because the activity of our estrogen levels go up. For a woman, we do not in general have any lower testosterone levels than we had in our earlier lives. So this whole like concept of estrogen de testosterone deficiency is not really been proven to be a thing. And I know that's gonna upset some of you who go to these doctors and they're giving you testosterone. I'm not saying testosterone can't be helpful, but you know, be careful because increasing activity of our androgens leads to several things, okay? When our SHBG decreases, the activity of androgen increases. That is why we see hair loss, okay? Male pattern baldness increases for some women, especially those who are prone, because of the increasing activity of our androgen levels. Our hair follicles have androgen receptors, okay? Also leads to increasing belly fat 
Androgens drive fat to the abdomen, especially in the face of inflammation. So gosh, there's so many more of you now. Double tap the screen to like the video. Please follow me if you are new. I would love to share more information with you. And of course, share this video by checking this little right-sided arrow right here. And so for those of you new joining, I know there's a lot of you. We're now almost up to 400 people. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, board certified OBGYN physician. I'm also a certified nutritionist. Oh my God, we're almost at 500. Ah, thank you for liking the video. Double tap the screen to like, 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 like this video. We're up to 3000 likes. Thank you so much. It makes TikTok show the video to more people and keeps me relevant on this platform. So increasing androgen levels will increase your body odor, increase your visceral fat, increase your hair loss. Okay. Also increases your um, bad cholesterol levels. So for those of you in your mid thirties, forties, going to the doctor and all of a sudden you're having increasing LDL levels and you're like, what the hell is going on? Probably has something to do with perimenopause. All of these changes are a constellation of symptoms. You are not crazy. Okay. You are not crazy. You are not crazy. So breast tenderness. Again, fluctuating estrogen and progesterone levels will lead to breast tenderness. Out of This has happened to me. It comes and goes. All of a sudden, I'm going about my normal business, and then my breasts become tender. I'm in the shower doing whatever, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Breast tenderness is very common. Sorry, I'm being told to slow down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, very, very common. Another thing, uh, let's see. Um, oh, okay. Uh, um, to do with androgen levels. I'm just looking. Um, so those are the big things. All right. Other things, burning mouth syndrome. So we see decrease in salivary production, which leads to, you will have worsening dental hygiene. We see an increase in tooth decay in perimenopause and menopause. Anybody out there? Have you seen that yet? Let me know. Like this, double tap the screen to like it. If you have had increasing changes in your mouth, dry mouth, dry sockets, increasing tooth decay. Um, very, very, very common in perimenopause. I want to hear it. I want to see it. And let me see those double taps to like this video. Um, Dry skin. This is a big one for me. Hair loss and dry skin. Oh my God. My skin was always oily. I suffered with acne and all through my normal years. I just, you know, oily skin kept my skin moist and that was great. But my dry skin is insane. Like I've totally had to change everything about my skincare routine because my skin has dried out so much in perimenopause. I used to be oily, greasy, slick, no, nothing. It's like dry, 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 dry. And I'm constantly, you know, chasing moisturizers so that I can have, you know, not as many wrinkles and dry skin. So very, very common. Fatigue, 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 fatigue. Who out there is fatigued since they've in their mid thirties and forties, all of a sudden out of nowhere. And you're being told you're lazy, you're not working hard enough, you're, you know, and, and no one is addressing your perimenopause. Fatigue is huge. Brain fog, inability to concentrate, especially in the evenings. Brain fog is huge in perimenopause. Um, I was talking to a patient this morning, we had a virtual visit and she was like, I can't even remember my name. Like she was struggling to remember some of the stuff she wanted to tell me. And I was like, hey, you know, perimenopause, I'm confused. I have to work a lot harder to stay focused. I haven't been able to read like I used to because I'm not, you know. Um, and so in the Galveston diet, we, we address some nutritional changes we can use to combat the brain fog and some of the memory issues that we're all going through in perimenopause and menopause. Um, we do see increasing anxiety as well. So any mental health disorder, especially brain fog and concentration issues and anxiety and depression can either start, you know, become unmasked in perimenopause or get worse in perimenopause. So you were clicking along, doing fine, managing your symptoms, and all of a sudden you notice an increasing amount of um, thank you for the likes, guys, and thank you for the gifts. Oh my God, I really appreciate it. Um, so it will tell me, I want to see in the comments what your symptoms are. Rage. Yes, we do see anger issues and rage, just the decompensation of the ability to cope with the usual day-to-day -day stresses. Definitely a huge part. A lot of that has to do with, you know, you're not, and then disrupted sleep. Oh my God, who out there is having disrupted sleep? Let me see it. Double tap the screen. Um, what, you know, are you sleeping? Tell me about the quality of your sleep. 
what is going on. I mean, it, it double tap the screen if you are having sleeping issues. Okay, yes, palpitations, absolutely. That um, increasing heart palpitations. The sinoatrial node in the heart, which controls our heart rate, has estrogen receptors. And when we take the estrogen away, we are, and for some of it, not for everyone, remember, everyone's menopausal symptomatology is different. Mine is not the same as yours. It doesn't matter what your levels are. We treat with estrogen, if you are a candidate, for your symptoms. We do not check blood levels, okay? It is not effective because if I have a 50 and you have a 50, I can feel great and be completely normal and you can have be having the shit kicked out of you by your menopause symptoms. So um, all very, very normal. So remember, if you have questions, put them in the question box down here below. Double tap this screen to like the video. We're almost up to 10,000 likes. Let's get it up to 10,000. Thank you so much. And share this video by clicking this right hand arrow button um, with anyone you think. And please welcome Welcome those of you who are new. If you'd like to follow me, I would be honored. Sweating, sweating, sweating. Of course, hot flashes. 85% of us have hot flashes. It is um, fluctuating body temperature. You could be cold, you could be hot, you get sweaty and then you're cold because you're wet. Um, absolutely. Oh, thank you for the bubble tea. That was sweet. Thank you for the gifts. Um, okay, itching. Itching is probably a lot to do with nerve changes and dry skin. We see shocking pain. So there are some... Um, Let's see, uh, besides the weight gain and the belly fat, by the way, <laughs> um, you tap. Okay, perimenopause, vasomotor symptoms, hormonal regular, severe hot flashes, irregular periods, bleeding, vaginal and dryness. Wait, I had a great um, night sweats, vaginal dryness. So our pelvic floor, the health of our pelvic floor, when I say pelvic floor, I'm talking about the vulva, the vagina, the, you know, everything to do with from our hip bone to hip bone down all the way back to the rectum. That whole area is completely dependent on estrogen to stay healthy, okay? When we go through perimenopause, we start having decreased blood flow to the area and the tissues getting thinner and less resilient, okay? For a lot of us, intercourse can become unbearable due to discomfort, okay? Vaginal estrogen is your friend. Do not be afraid to ask for it. I think every woman in menopause should be on it if they choose to be sexually active. If you choose not to be sexually active, you go, girl. That is totally up to you. But if you want to be sexually active, meaning penis and vagina sex or, or vaginal penetration of whatever type make float your boat, and it's uncomfortable, you have got to consider vaginal estrogen to be careful and take care of your vaginal health. It also increases blood flow back to the area. Vaginal estrogen is one of the best treatments for recurrent UTIs in menopause. Let me say that again. Vaginal estrogen, not antibiotics, is the best treatment for recurrent UTIs in perimenopause and menopause. If you are having pain, please go see your doctor and, and go in with the suggestion. So um, if you think you might be in perimenopause or that your symptoms could be perimenopause, please take our perimenopause quiz. It will, and then you put in your email, it'll give you your score. You can take that and all of the information there to your own physician to have a better discussion and you can start listing out what you want for your treatment. It is okay for you to drive this bus, okay? And so my my goal is to empower you with enough information, education about your options, both hormonal and non-hormonal, over-the-counter and prescription, so that you can be the best advocate for yourself and, and be able to have a functional conversation with your doctor and not be dismissed. I'm providing links to medical journal articles. I provide a lot of free information for you. So where do you find it? If you go to galvestondiet.com or you go to, oh, hi, Lexi. Okay. Uh, you go to this Galveston Diet link up here. And then at the top of my page, you see my picture and you can go to the link in bio. Scroll down till you see a little blue box that says, what is perimenopause? Click on that. Some great information there. At the bottom of that link is the quiz. Okay. And you are ton of information um, heading your way to make help you be a better advocate for your own perimenopause. So um, tingling, so we're going back to some of the unusual symptoms of perimenopause. Tingling extremity, tingling extremities happens, okay? I get new tingling in my fingers. That is a new thing. Um, discomfort 
the uh, vote is not to be uh, underestimated. Pins and needles are really common, disrupted circulation, numbness in the arms and legs, um, and nervous system functioning from low estrogen levels, and also B12 deficiency. I diagnose a lot of B12 and folate deficiencies in my patient. So if you are having some of these symptoms, please make sure that you um, are addressing this with your physician and getting your blood test done. Um, Okay, so electric shocks. Um, electric shocks during menopause, they don't really completely understand why it happens, but it's due to the dramatic, drastic estrogen fluctuations affecting the nervous system, which can provoke shocking, or I'm looking at my notes, tingling sensations, okay? This can be a symptom of perimenopause, okay? Um, ears itching, I see this a lot. It is usually due to the nerve changes associated, so you're more susceptible to the stimulation. Also, dry skin, the two of those things. Ears itching in perimenopause is one of the kind of unusual but often missed symptoms of perimenopause, especially when you never had it before, okay? Um, tooth decay, we talked about burning tongue. Um, all these changes in our oral cavity, dry skin, dry mouth, changes and increasing in, in, in um, cavity and tooth decay, very, very, very common. You've got to stay on top of your oral hygiene when you are in perimenopause. Um, let's see, tingling extremities. Okay, uh, I'm just wanting to make sure I want to tell you guys everything. Um, okay, so let's kind of round it out from the top. Um, Menopause is a natural stage of life. Yes, so I see this a lot. Like my doctor told me it's natural and doesn't need to be treated. Cancer is natural. Infections are natural, okay? You don't have to do anything to get cancer. It can just happen. You know, infections, so it doesn't mean that it's not pathologic. Natural does not mean not pathologic, okay? So a lot of doctors have not kept up with the latest research, have not um, were never taught about perimenopause and how to treat it and how to support a woman through this time of their life. And they are missing, you know, they are under treating and under diagnosing these women and women are suffering needlessly. You do not have to suffer. Even if you are not a candidate for estrogen, there are multiple other things that can help you, including, you know, for high, so then we treat individual symptoms, okay? Estrogen kind of treats everything, but if you can't take it, you can't take it. I get it, okay? So for hot flashes, we have, for pharmaceutical options, we have, there are some SSRIs, some antidepressant medications that actually can help with hot flashes. Not, not crazy to recommend that. Neurontin is what I typically give uh, for my breast cancer patients or patients who've had, excuse me, a history of a pulmonary embolus or you know blood clots and they are not good candidates for estrogen. Um, those are other great um, options. So Neurontin and Clonidine and some SSRIs, serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are a form of antidepressant, can be helpful. Um, what is the difference between perimenopause and menopause? Menopause is the end. Your estrogen, your ovaries have shut down. You have no estrogen left, and you will never have another period. The end. Okay, perimenopause is the transition time between perfectly functioning normal hormonal, everything's fine, this is not bothering you till you're at your period stop. That's a seven to 10 year transition. That is the difference between perimenopause and menopause. So for those of you just joining, there's about 500 of you. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm a board certified OBGYN physician, so I'm an MD. I'm also a certified nutritionist through culinary medicine program at Tulane University. I'm not a registered dietitian, that's a very different thing. Bow down to all the awesome registered dietitians out there, but I do have pretty much of like a master's degree equivalent in nutrition training. So I use a lot of nutritional therapy for my patients um, and I teach a lot about it. I'm the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet, um, which is a nutrition program I created for women in menopause and midlife to help them ease the transition naturally through nutrition. Again, but not saying that even with the world's greatest nutrition, you still <laughs> may suffer. And so I, I, I'm also a menopause warrior. I'm here to open the conversation so that you don't feel crazy. Um, I only see patients in Texas. So my medical license is only good in the state of Texas. I cannot legally practice anywhere else. So for you to make an appointment with me, I do do virtual visits, but you must physically be in Texas at the time of the visit. It's best if you come see me in my office. Why? Because I have 
this machine here, which is an in-body scanner, I can actually tell you your level of visceral fat, your level of muscle. It's much, much more information than just a basic BMI, which I hate. Um, I don't use a BMI to diagnose patients. I don't use terms like obesity. Um, we talk about how much muscle you have versus fat, how to get your best health. Um, oh, thank you. The wallpaper is freaking phenomenal. Um, thank you. I have a l tons of questions. My good, good friend, Emily, Emily's designs, if you go on Instagram, um, so she it helped me with this office. She picked the wallpaper, the mirrors, the chair. Look at the fabric on this chair. I mean, come on. Um, I have no talent for these type of things, but I hired someone to do it, and she's not. Look at this. Look at the chandelier. I mean, she's amazing. So, um, Emily's design. So, if you go on Instagram, and I'll I'll tag her. Um, so, I do not take insurance in my clinic. Um, insurance doesn't like to pay for well people. So, most of my patients come to me are well, and they do not consider perimenopause. Insurance doesn't consider perimenopause a disease. And so it doesn't want to pay for, for me to check your vitamin D or for me to check your, um, you know, so insurance denies so many claims. I spend an hour with a patient. Insurance will not cover that visit. So um, my visits are cash, well, not cash, but, you know, we do have a um, care credit. So see that sign over there, care credit. So I do take care credit because I understand some people can't come up with the money. So I use them as a um, way for to help patients afford um, the um, so I'm outside of Houston um, if you want to come and see me I'm just south of Houston in the Friendswood area if you want to make an appointment to come and see me you're more than welcome if you go to the link here at Galson Diet there is a link make an appointment with Dr. Haver at the top of the page um, so yeah insurance is ridiculous I hate them I am I no longer am going to be told by a hospital administrator or an insurance company how to practice medicine I'm done Okay, um, so yes, PCOS makes perimenopause very much, even adding another level of frustration versus everything else um, that you're going through. Um, why can't you, us women or United States women, US women maybe take synthetic hormones? I take synthetic hormones, guys. Um, there is not a study that has proven that bioidentical is any safer, and for me, it's less expensive. So given, you know, my comfort level, my research, what I've done, and what I recommend to patients, yes, I prescribe bioidenticals, the ones that are FDA approved, okay? I don't do pellets only because they have not done the studies to prove the efficacy and safety, and then as soon as they do that, the FDA will approve them, but they haven't done those studies yet. And so when that happens, then I will feel more comfortable prescribing those types of things. But for now, I stick with the FDA recommendations. There are synthetic versus uh, the bioidentical ones. For me, I like a patch. It's easy. I can't remember to take a pill every day. I use the Compi Patch generic version. It's working great for me. My symptoms are amazing. My blood levels look great. I mean, my, my blood levels of cholesterol and you know my health levels look great. My visceral fat is like nothing. I'm doing amazing on them. On my hot flashes, I'm sleeping like I am a new woman. And so, but again, if a patient feels strongly about bioidenticals, I will prescribe them. They're just a lot more expensive. So, but that is her choice. And so I try to respect that. Now, any prescriptions I give in my clinic are covered by your insurance plan. That's normal. Um, let's see. Um, how do you get less androgens? Well... Um, stop taking them. So if you are suffering from, if you are on testosterone from your healthcare provider and you're having hair loss and visceral fat and not really feeling like they're helping you that much, the first step is to come off of them. Okay. If you're like, oh my God, I'm a new woman. They're doing all this amazing stuff. Well then stay on them, but realize that they're not risk-free. No medication is risk-free and that you have enough information to continue them, you know, knowing what the potential risks are. Um, okay, so I'm going to the questions right here. You've had bilateral pulmonary embolus. Can you take hormones? You can probably take progesterone safely, but most physicians would um, have you avoid estrogen because your risk is higher than the potential benefit of another pulmonary embolus. But again, talk to your, um, this is a conversation not between me and you. This should be a conversation between you and your OB-GYN and your pulmonary doctor who, who um, handled your medication. Can a Mirena IUD help with perimenopause? Some symptoms of perimenopause, uh, it can, um, but not most of them. It won't really help with hot flashes. It won't help with mood swings. It won't help with depression. It won't help with any of the, the 
the super tentorial, you know, the brain symptoms, but it may help with some of the period issues that you're having. Um, okay. Is low estrogen genetic? No. Uh, you are either having ovulation or not. Low estrogen, I, I don't know what you mean by low estrogen. So uh, there's a lot of people out there who are checking levels and telling you you have low this and high that when it's normal for your site, for your estrogen. We do not have steady state estrogen levels in throughout our reproductive cycle. The estrogen levels peak and they decline every single month in a normal cycle. So all this low and high, I mean, if you're a fertility patient, that's a whole nother um, deal. But if they're low, you might be in menopause. So that's the only, you know, you're either prepubertal or postmenopause when you have low estrogen. That's it, you know. Um, let's see. Um, when is a hysterectomy recommended? Okay. That is a complicated question. A hysterectomy is a major freaking surgery. It's a great surgery for those who absolutely need it. But what's happening in medicine is women, doctors are skipping all of the preliminary steps. They're not following the American College of OBGYN guidelines. And they're, they are basically recommending hysterectomies when women don't need them. And they're not offering any other treatment options. They're not giving any other options for treatment. They're just like, and here's the thing that freaks me out the most. Oh, you don't need that uterus anymore. Let's take it out. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? You're going to remove a healthy or you're going to put someone under the tremendous risk of a major surgery just because you feel you're trying to cash out on her pelvis. If a doctor tells you you don't need that uterus anymore, they are simply trying to make money. They do not have your best interest at heart. Run screaming. Do not undergo. Do not go to sleep with this person. This is not a medical indication for hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is a needed surgery, but probably half of the hysterectomies done in this country are unnecessary and the doctor is cashing out on your pelvis, be very freaking careful. I don't care how sweet he was to you and how many babies he delivered for you. If he's like, come on, let's take that thing out. It's just going to get cancer. Do you know what the risk of endometrial cancer is? Your risk of getting endometrial cancer is less than the surgical complication rate. Do you know that? Did he tell you that? So do not go under the knife with someone unless you have a clear medical indication and there's documented pathology for you to have your uterus out. Okay. Sorry, I got off on tangents. All right, everybody. If you're just joining, there's a lot of you coming in and out. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, board certified OB-GYN, talking about perimenopause, how to diagnose it, some of that missed and uncommon symptoms. Thank you so much for the flowers and all the gifts. You guys are awesome. Please double tap the screen to like this video. It really helps drive engagement. If you want to follow me, please follow me. I think you click the follow button somehow. And then, of course, if you want to share this video, I would be honored. You just click this right-handed button. Um, Wait, they are lying, and yes, menopause is a natural process. Who's lying? You're gonna piss me off, okay? Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's not pathologic. So you shaming another woman for seeking help for a pathologic condition, even though it's natural, is hateful and shameful, and you should never do that. If you are having a beautiful perimenopause and menopause and not suffering a symptom, good for you. That's fantastic. But 85% of us are getting the shit kicked out of us, and you saying something like that is absolutely uncalled for. Yes, it's natural. It doesn't mean it's not pathologic. It doesn't mean it's not causing harm to a woman. So stop it. Absolutely stop it. Um, sorry, it, it makes me so mad that a woman would suffer needlessly when she could be treated. I'm never going to stand for that. If you are not suffering, good for you. Keep your mouth shut, okay? And thank the lucky stars up in heaven that you are not suffering. But do not take another woman down for seeking care for something that is disrupting her life. I am never going to stand for that and never for another physician to say that to another woman. It is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, sorry. Double tap the video. Thank you for the roses. I'm just trying to do my best to, to shut these people down. I will shut you down. I will block you. you will, I, I'm just not going to stand for it. Cancer is a natural process. Infection is a natural process. You don't have to take the medications. You could suffer and you could die, but why, but you know, it is your choice to be treated. It is your choice to alleviate suffering. And as physicians, our job is to alleviate suffering. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I got so hot and bothered. I got to take off my jacket. Um, all right. So, okay. Thank you for liking the video. Share this video because I, I'm not going to stand for it. 
I'm not gonna stand for it. And if your doctor told you it's natural or they don't believe in treating it, find a new doctor if you're suffering. If you're not suffering, that's awesome, that's awesome. But remember, most of us are. The vast majority of us are. The vast majority of us are underdiagnosed, undertreated, and are suffering needlessly, needlessly. Help your sister out. Okay, so HRT timeline, that's a tough one. That's very, very complicated, okay? There are risk benefit ratios. They're looking at individual symptomatology. I'm 53, I'm still on them. I'm gonna go until at least 60, at least 60. And then I'm gonna reconsider and kind of figure out where I'm gonna go, okay? Oh, thank you, hell y'all. It's Kristen sharing the video with more than five people. That's amazing, thank you so much. Um, so if you're new, double tap the screen to like the video. Thank you, oh, we're up to 22,000 likes. Thank you so much. And share this video by clicking the right-hand screen. Um, I am located near Houston, Texas, if you wanna make an appointment to come and see me. I actually saw this awesome patient, um, had a telemedicine visit with a patient today who we started on um, hormones through perimenopause. She was not fully menopausal. We put her on hormones to support her perimenopause journey and some amazing things have happened to her. She was having persistent migraine headaches and they have stopped. They stopped. Okay. She also, her brain fog is better. She's slowly noticing the difference. So TikTok does not allow me to save the video and reshare it. What I typically do is post it on Facebook and on YouTube when I'm done. Um, they will allow me to download it. And so, um, Okay, 57 now, good. Could have used your great advice 10 years ago. Keep sharing. I'm gonna keep trying. So yeah, everybody double tap the video. Thank you so much. I'm gonna get to some more questions. How do you know if you're fully menopausal? Blood test, best way. Or if you're in your 50s, your, you know, your mid 40s to 50s and you've gone a full year without a period. You're, that's pretty much the definition of full menopause. Your gen says no blood work for perimenopause. Is that true? Yes, that's true. There's not a great blood test for perimenopause, but it doesn't mean we can't diagnose it, okay? It doesn't just stop there. It is a long, intense conversation with the patient with a full list of symptomatology. If they're lazy, they can just give you the quiz. If your doctor is not giving you the perimenopausal symptom quiz, find a new doctor. It's the Australasian Perimenopause Scoring System. I have it on my website. You can take it, print it out, it, and go bring it to your doctor and say, here, you know? And so please, please, please visit our website. Take the perimenopause quiz. Um, how do you find it? So if you go to the link in my bio, okay, so it's gonna be up here. If you click on Galveston Diet, it'll take you out of this video. And then you go to, um, oh good, there's a bunch of you taking the quiz right now. That's awesome. Uh, if you go to here, then you scroll down, you're gonna see a little blue square. If you go down towards the bottom, it'll say, what is perimenopause? Click on that box. That will take you to my blog. The blog's gonna talk all about perimenopause. Great info there. Yeah, there's like 10 of you taking the quiz right now. That's awesome. And um, at the bottom is a link to the quiz in that blog. And you can take the quiz. It's gonna ask for your email full disclosure, in the emails, you're going to get a ton of information about perimenopause, treatment options, hormone options, what to ask your doctor, all, you know, it's free, it's for you, it's to make you a better advocate for yourself so you are armed with information and education so you can make a better informed decision about what your treatment options are and insist you can teach your doctor. Okay, a lot of uh, our followers have said, my doctor never would have like given me these options had I not shown him the medical articles you gave me. So um, I do not administer testosterone. Um, there's a question down here, what's my favorite way? I, you know, have not seen enough, uh, I've not seen enough information or studies that support the efficacy for, okay, I say I don't give testosterone. If you are, if you've lost your ovaries at a younger age, premenopausal, testosterone has been shown to be helpful. There's a very small subset of menopausal women, very small, that testosterone might be helpful for, but really that's done. That's a very, very, but most women are not, their sex life is not helped. They are, you know, there's not enough efficacy and safety data for me to be, feel comfortable prescribing it yet to the general population. So, um, 
Let's see. Uh, okay, a lot of you on link in bio. Love, and we have an inflammation quiz as well. If you think that you're eating healthy, you don't understand what's going on, why you're gaining weight, you can um, take our inflammation quiz. That is at the link at the top of our link in bio page. Okay, so um, will the pill help perimenopause? Yes. And so typically when a patient comes to me in perimenopause and she's just suffering, you know, and I know I need to give her some hormone support, she's a good candidate, she doesn't have any, any red flags or risk factors that make her not a good candidate, I typically prescribe a low-dose birth control pill. It's cheap, it's easy, I got a million options, insurance covers it, okay? So yes, I'm very, very, it's very common for me to prescribe a low-dose birth control pill to support a woman through perimenopause um, because I know it's FDA approved, I know their insurance is going to cover it, I know it's easy to take, I know I got, if this one doesn't work, I got 50 more options behind it. So. Um, okay, uh, if you have questions, guys, put them in the question box down below. When does postmenopause end? Never. You're in postmenopausal forever. Forever. Now, symptoms can get better. The 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 um, aggressive hot flashes. You know, when people talk about symptomatology, they're usually talking about hot flashes, sleep disturbances, night sweats. Those can go away. Those tend to go away, but it could take four to twelve years, depending on the patient. So yeah, kind of scary information there. Um, now, uh, if you also are looking for great information about a nutrition program specifically designed for women in perimenopause to help support you through this journey, take a look at the Galveston Diet, go to our website, it's all there. We're having a sale, 22% off right now. Use the code 22STRONG, 22STRONG, to save 22% on all of our supplements and programs. Have at it, go for it. Um, we extended the sale, it did so well. <laughs> our sale blew our freaking minds. Um, we have had, we are now up to um, 60, almost 68,000 students in our program. And we probably had 2,000 people join since we started the sale. Blew my mind. So it's making sense to some people. So take advantage of the sale. We extended it for another week. Um, or just go to the website and learn more about the program. Okay, going back to the questions. On the pill. Great question, how do I know if I'm in menopause? So for my patients, I usually keep them, if they're doing well, no contraindications, they feel great, I know that the pill is going to support them through their perimenopause, it will mask it. That's what happened to me for most of it. I was on the pill for polycystic ovarian syndrome, got off the pill at 50, and the sh I got the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> So it was horrible. Um, and or 49, I think I got off. And I was like, whoa, what the hell's going on? And that's kind of where my perimenopause journey started. So I typically keep the patients on the pill if they're doing well until 50, 51, take them off for a couple months, check their blood levels. Just I'm only checking blood levels to see if they're menopausal because then we can shift them to the menopausal dosing, which is lower. And so we can lower some of the risks associated with um, hormones. So if you're on the pill, you're, you and your doctor have a discussion about when to come off simply to do the blood test to see if you're normal. Average age is 51, so about 51, we, I start checking my patients. Um, is a hysterectomy needed with ablation syndrome? Not sure what you mean by ablation syndrome. So if your ablation didn't work, usually the next step is a hysterectomy. Um, or if you're not happy with it, um, is it safe to get pregnant during perimenopause? So um, the lots of women get pregnant in perimenopause on purpose or not on purpose. Um, when that happens, your risks go up because you're older, and it's more to do with age than perimenopause. So your risk of pregnancy-induced hypertension, your risk of diabetes, your risk of miscarriage because of aging ovaries, um, all goes up. And so a perimenopausal pregnancy is possible, less likely because your fertility goes down, but it also is more risky. And again, a very individual conversation with your ob -GYN to discuss those things and see if you feel like you really want a baby or you're willing to take the risk. Um, frequent UTIs are very, very, very common in perimenopause, not premenopause, not, you know, so if you're having recurrent UTIs that did not happen in your 30s and all of a sudden you're in your late 30s, 40s and UTIs are coming, it could be because your estrogen levels are decreasing. I had a long talk earlier in this discussion about how estrogen keeps the pelvic floor healthy, the bladder healthy, the bladder outlet healthy. And as those systems start failing, you start seeing recurrent UTIs. One of the best treatments for recurrent UTIs is vaginal estrogen vaginal estrogen treatment to keep that tissue healthy. Multiple antibiotics are not gonna cut it, okay? 
Um, let's see. Does hormone replacement increase the chance of cancer? So what we found after, you know, years and years after the Women's Health Initiative is that definitely your risk of colorectal cancer decreases with HRT. Breast cancer, it doesn't look like it causes HRT does not cause breast cancer. It feeds a breast cancer, okay? So breast cancer is caused by multiple things, genetics, environment, you know, and that women who are on hormone replacement therapy versus women who aren't, and they all get diagnosed with breast cancer. The women who are on HRT are diagnosed at an earlier stage and they have better outcomes. So those are all things to discuss with your oncologist. If you have a family history, these are intense conversations about your personal risks. I can't make that decision for you, but it is not impossible with a family history to consider HRT, at least for a short period of time. Um, uh, low DHEA. I don't know much about that. That is kind of in the woo-woo side of the world. That is going outside of the FDA. Um, I was on DHEA for fertility issues. That's a whole different ball of wax there. Um, I really can't comment on that. I don't have any training on in that. Um, is there a way to find specialized doctors? Word of mouth right now. I am working on putting together a um, list of patients, of, like my students who are recommending doctors who are menopause friendly and like having a database for you guys to find doctors, but I can't vouch for them. All I can do is like this, this patient, you know, this student in the Galveston diet had a great experience with this doctor in this area. So you'll be able to search it by area and see if there's a Galveston friendly, you know, recommended, not by me, our, my interns will call the office, make sure it's a legit doctor and that they exist and that they are OBGYN and whatever. Whatever. but other than that that's the best I can do okay um, 55 never missed a period normal yes 55 is kind of the tail end of when we think you know that is normal for a woman to go through menopause so you're still okay there um, at 57 is it still safe to take Estrogen, I'll be taking it. Again, nothing is 100% without risks, but I know my own personal risk factors based on my nutrition, my lifestyle, my family history, my medical history, my surgical history, my social history. And so that is a risk I'm willing to take for the risk benefit ratio, okay? Um, but again, that is an individual conversation between you and your doctor, not between me and you. I'm not your physician. So for those of you just joining, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, um, answering questions about menopause and perimenopause. Um, Double tap the screen. Now, if you are new and you're like, I don't know if I'm in perimenopause, earlier in the talk, I talked about some of the unusual symptoms having to do with perimenopause. Um, things like dry mouth, increased um, cavities, electrical shocks, palpitations, headaches, increasing migraines, increasing depression, um, changes in your skin, dry skin, dry mouth, dry hair, dry eyes, itchy skin, itchy ears. All of those can be associated with perimenopause. Um, Okay, so um, double tap the screen to like the video. We're up to 26,000 likes. It looks like we're getting there. Um, I'm answering some questions right now. Let's see. Uh, you have an IUD, tubal. Okay, wait. What treatment supplements help with P PVCS? Can you give me some more information? I don't know what the abbreviation PVCS means. Um, Will hair grow back postmenopause? It depends on why you lost it. It really depends. We have multiple reasons why women lose hair. Um, postmenopause, typically we do not see a tremendous, without treatment, we don't see a tremendous amount of hair growing back. Um, it kind of permanent, it can permanently damage the hair follicle. You love my earrings? Thank you. Okay, so I'll show you. My husband, a few years, a couple of years ago, they're pretty. Gave me diamond studs. I like to fall out of my chair. He surprised me with diamond studs for um, Christmas a few years ago. I was like, oh my God, I don't, you know, what? But they kind of felt, they sat weird on my earlobes. They kind of flopped around. And so I never wore them because it just, they didn't, they kind of one sat like that, one sat like that, even with the different backs and all that. And I just, and so... Um, I, I saw some in a magazine like this and he took them to a jeweler and he bought the, the setting so they could dangle. And now I love them. Uh, he gave them to me this Christmas. He surprised me 
and because I never wore them and they had them made so yeah and this is like a standard setting but now I like I'll wear them every day they, they're beautiful so thank you um Anyway, let's see. After tubal ligation, your hormones went crazy. Why? Okay, it, this is something I warn my patients about before they get their tubes tied. If you, what were your periods like? What were your cycles like? What was your premenstrual PMDD like before you were on hormones? So like if you're on birth control pills and you have these light periods and they're amazing and you're, you don't have any, you know, PMS, you don't have any PMDD, you're doing great. And then you get your tubes tied. I'm like, be war I always tell the patients, be warned. Birth control pills are treatments for heavy bleeding, for cramping, for cycle changes, for PMS, for PMDD, da da da, da. Now we're going to take your birth control pills away because your tubes are tied. And all of a sudden, your life is going to go cattywampus. I warn the patients, we may end up back on birth control pills to treat things that they were masking for you while you're on it. And if your doctor didn't have that conversation with you, then... That's it. So that's typically why we see uh, everything going cattywampus when you get your tubes tied. Um, oh, PVCs. Okay, PVCs, palpitations. Um, so, okay, palpitations. So we do see an increase in PVCs and, uh, and palpitations in perimenopause. The sinoatrial node has estrogen receptors. And when you take the estrogen away, it can start... Um, it can, it can cause inflammation at the SA node because estrogen is the power of anti-inflammation, which can cause an increase in PVCs. And so treatment kind of depends. You need to see a cardiologist. Some will suggest estrogen. Some will actually just treat the PVCs with, with the beta blocker. And so, or whatever the medication is now. I, I haven't thought about that in a long time. But that is usually handled on the cardiology end of things. Um, can I talk about the impact of low vitamin D levels? I have multiple videos on this. I have multiple TikToks. I have, um, I'm probably going to do a blog on this soon. But here's the deal. Ladies, 85% of us are vitamin D deficient in perimenopause and menopause. 85 freaking percent. Many multiple reasons for that. We don't absorb it as well. We're not getting enough in our diet. We're not getting out in the sun as much because we're protecting our skin, understandably. We are darker complected. We don't live in places with a lot of sunshine. I mean, there's a million reasons, okay? And so um, vitamin D is something I supplement every single day. I take vitamin D every day because why would you not? Um, vitamin D deficiency, vitamin D is a hormone. Yeah, it's a steroid hormone and it acts in multiple areas of the body. Okay, so vitamin D is also important for increasing calcium absorption in the gut. If you have low vitamin D levels, you're not absorbing as much calcium and therefore you're at increased risk for osteoporosis and osteopenia. So important. Double tap the screen to like the video, everybody. Thank you, thank you. We're up to 27,000 likes. Double tap, double tap, double tap at the top. See me tapping, tapping, tapping. And um, so, and also share this video, like this vi video, but vitamin D, weight gain, belly fat, headaches, uh, cholesterol, hypertension, fatigue, cardiovascular disease. It goes on and on and on and on. So I feel so strongly about this. I made my own supplement. Okay, these are on sale, 22% off. She, this is not a plant to sell these, but if you're looking for it, this is a daily supplement. This is something you can take every day. If you are deficient, you will need more than this to get your levels up. This is a maintenance dose that's in here. It's 2,000, and it also has omega-3. So I'm lazy. I put them together because I don't want to take two pills. But this is a wonderful supplement to maintain your levels. If you are deficient, you need to take a much higher dose once a week, as prescription by your physician, you need to ask to have your levels checked. Ask to have your levels checked. Every single time you go to the doctor, check my vitamin D. And then they'll give you the prescription to get you up. And then you can take this every day to maintain those levels once you get them up. So freaking important. Oh, so if you go to our website, galvestondiet.com, you'll see the supplements button somewhere on there. You can go check it out there. It's under meal plan or something. And then use the code 22STRONG. Supplements are 22% off as well, 22 strong to save 22% on the cost of it. If your doctor refuses to check your vitamin D, go find a new doctor. Go find a new doctor.
What am I a doctor of? I'm a doctor of medicine. I have an MD from Louisiana State University. I was Alpha Omega Alpha in the Honor Society. I graduated number three, no, four in my class. Um, and then I did a residency in obstetrics and gynecology. And then I did further training in nutrition and I am culinary medicine certified from Tulane University. So I am a board certified OBGYN physician. I'm also a certified nutritionist as well. So that's my background. I'm um, also my undergrad, if you care, is in geology. <laughs> so I have a lot of random knowledge on vacation about rocks and faults and paleolithic things. And I know all the eons and eras and, and whatever. Yeah, I was a dork. I was a geek. Um, and it's a miracle because my parents were bankrupt and I had to put myself through school. Uh, so yeah. Do I have a list of labs? I do. Okay, so if you go to our blog, um, if you go to galvestondiet.com, click on blog, just scroll through the blogs. You will see tests. Wait, let me, let me find the blog so I can show you. Um, and you can print it out and take it to your doctor. And it talks about tests to ask for. And a lot of people are like, I shouldn't have to ask my doctor for tests. Look, your doctors are, look, they are under so much pressure from their employers to get you the frick in and out there. Be an advocate. Be an advocate, okay? It's like, knowing stuff about cars and you take it into the mechanic and you're like, I want you to fix this versus like, I don't know what's wrong. I mean, you know, that's fine, but it depends on the level of the training and the knowledge of the mechanic if your car's gonna get fixed. So, um, so uh, let me find it, hang on. So if you go to galvestondiet.com and click on blog, okay? We are, you'll see top five evidence-based supplements that fight inflammation. You'll see the Galveston challenges. You'll see hot flash, healthy travel tips, fabulous four challenge. You'll see what is perimenopause. That's all the perimenopause information and the quizzes there. And then it's on, I think the second page. So if you click on two, then you can go to six tests to maximize your well woman exam in menopause. This is, so let me, I'm going to flip the screen here um flip camera it's this one here okay so let me click on it so in this blog i go through different lab tests and why to talk to your doctor and then here's like my top list of things you can do to prepare for your doctor's appointment like make the first morning appointment and um, go in fasting and then i talk about standard tests thyroid nutritional deficiency so you know and I can't guarantee that your doctor is going to draw them, but or that your insurance is going to cover them. But if you give the right symptoms, if you say, hey, I'm having hair loss, hey, I'm having weight gain, vitamin D is covered with some of those. I go through all of that. Yes, the wallpaper is amazing. Um, agreed. So if you want to learn more about the wallpaper, um, because everybody asks about it because it is that fabulous. If you go to Instagram and you go to, and you look up, let me make sure I do this right. Emily's Design Center, all one word, Emily's Design Center. Um, and you can send her a message. She is uh, the designer who did this office and it's phenomenal. Um, just send her a message on Instagram, Emily's Design Center, okay. Let me go back to the questions. All right, everybody, I'm gonna have to get ready for my next patient. Thank you so much for joining me. Double tap this video one more time um, for the likes and to keep me relevant on this platform. Please follow me on TikTok, it would mean the world. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. We're on all the things. Check out our website at galvestondiet.com. Remember, our nutritional program is self-study, all, you know, one-time fee. It is 22% off right now if you use the code 22STRONG, and we will chat again soon.